In this video, I'm going to cover four things. How to export the OBJ file from JAM. What does the OBJ file look like? How to prepare the OBJ file for Tabletop Simulator and how to import into Tabletop Simulator. To begin with, in your JAM application, at the very top we have an export to OBJ button. In here you'll see a little bit of a description of what it will do and we'll have these check boxes down below. Now this dictates what gets exported from your JAM model and it corresponds with the palettes down below. So by default terrain will be selected which are these nine elements. Plants, rocks, and fire will be the second palette and there is a disclaimer that at this time trees will not be exported for licensing issues. Uh, the third one is walls, fence, bridges which covers number two to number nine and then the last one is buildings so that's this number one button which are these structures placed in the scene. When you click on this it will go through and evaluate all the mesh data in the project and compile that into an OBJ file in just a few seconds. It'll show you where it gets saved in the name of the file. The suffix NSB stands for the nature, structure, and buildings. So if you're exporting multiple versions of OBJ files from your map, you can keep tabs on which file is which. So now we'll jump over to look at what an OBJ file looks like. So once you've exported from JAM, you'll get two files that are similar to this. You'll have a material file and an OBJ file. And I saved these off a little bit ago, and I'll drag those into any application that can open OBJ files. In this case, I'm using Unity 2019. Now I fast forwarded there, but that was about 28 seconds to load the OBJ file into Unity. Once placed, you can click on it, and over here you'll see that it exported the model and all of the material definitions. But you'll notice it doesn't quite look like it did in JAM. And that's because when you export the OBJ file, you're not getting the textures that come out of it, you're just getting the material references. So the grass knows it's grass still and it's showing the green color, but it doesn't have the, the grass texture. But you'll see all the geometries came through. Um, by default, some of the materials are transparent here, so it looks a little goofy. Looks like it captured all of the elements from JAM. So this is what an OBJ file looks like. It won't have uh, the weather, uh, atmosphere, uh, the sun settings from JAM. Those are things you'll have to add later on. So now I'll talk about how to prepare the OBJ file for Tabletop Simulator. To do this, there is a specific process that you need to follow. Based on how Tabletop Simulator is created, um, we have to use an archived version of Unity, specifically 2019. You scroll down here, very bottom, you need the point one. So if you download this and then during the install you enable um, features for um, Windows, Mac, and Linux, and then when you install this it'll have an option to create an asset bundle, which is a type of file that is packaged that Tabletop Simulator can access. Once you have Unity 2019.1 installed, you can visit uh, my GitHub where you can click on the code and download the zip file, which has a Unity project file. This was Tabletop Simulator's template that then I merged with jams template so you'll have all of the jam materials coming back to this scene here we'll have unity 2019 I dropped it into that template file that I got from github and I'll click on the model I'll come up here to the inspector window I'll lock that in place so it doesn't move around on me first thing I do is I change the scale factor to 0.1 and this is so the model comes in smaller in tabletop simulator and then you can scale it up. If you don't do this it'll still work but it'll be a large model that fills the room and it's a little bit more cumbersome to work with. The next thing you need to do is do the read write enable and generate colliders and this will allow the pieces to find the colliders that are in the model and they can you can place a 
figurine up here, you can place it down here or in the water. So I hit apply. So that took about 30 seconds to do, and then you can see that the model is now one tenth the size that it was, but looks pretty much the same. So the next step is under the inspector to come over here to materials, and you'll see all of the materials that are listed, but there is no textures assigned to those. So if you're using this template, you can go to the material and you can find all of the jam materials and textures, and then it's essentially finding which ones you want to provide data for, and then dragging them over to it. So in this case, we'll start with the dirt. I'll come over here, find the dirt, click and hold, drag it over into the slot. And then if I come down here and hit apply, you'll see, so you see that probably took uh, 30 seconds to evaluate the model and find anything that was using the dirt. And you can see now that uh, everything has the dirt texture applied to it now. So now I'm going to fast forward and I'm going to just drag and drop all of the materials that I want into the scene here. So you'll see that I left some of them unmapped. And that is because in the models, some of these were either using materials that didn't have textures and were just using it for color. So you won't see those here. And it'll retain the color, but there's no texture needed. If you want to, you can create your own textures at this point. Or you can change the colors, the, the materials that I provided here. Once you hit apply, everything should have a material. And let's take it, just a quick glance just to make sure everything got captured correctly. If you do decide to use the grass, select the object and you can hit F. I'll unlock the inspector so now it's looking at grass mesh, which you can also see over here on the left side under hierarchy. And then there's a special grass material called grass sway that will then kind of do an alpha cutout so you can see the individual blades of grass. But that looks pretty good. So I've mapped materials. You can further customize it as you want, but for the most part, that is how you assign materials to your OBJ file. Once you have that set up the way you like it, you need to create the asset bundle. To do that, you come up here to your hierarchy window, you find the object that's in the scene, and you drag it back down into your project window. And it's going to create a prefab of that. Original prefab. And then at the lower right, you should have a window that shows a small icon and it shows asset bundle. And we want to give this a name, and this will be the name of the file that goes into Tabletop Simulator. Do New. And depending on your setup, there may be a bug here where it won't let you type on your first try, and you have to hit Enter, select the prefab, and come back and try it again. I had that bug for a while, and it seems to have gone away, but just a FYI. Hit enter Return to accept it. For this one, you don't have Unity 3D shown. Click New, type Unity 3D, and hit Enter, Accept. And now you have a prefab that's set up um, with a definition for an asset bundle that you can then come up here to Assets and Build Asset Bundles, which is part of the Unity 2019.1.
So that took about 17 seconds to export the asset bundle and now we're ready to look at Tabletop Simulator. So on Steam, Tabletop Simulator has a workshop with a bunch of really nice add-ons to help embellish your maps. VES makes some tremendous models and those are available. In this case I'm using the table setup which gives you individual player seats um, dice tower, some dice, some instructions and setup, and it's really nice. So they have done just a tremendous job to provide some assets for Tabletop Simulator. So all we need to do then is come up here to Objects, go to Components, I'm going to do Custom, there's Asset Bundle, and we place that onto the scene with the left mouse button, and you're happy with that, you right mouse and we will go and find the path for the main. So I can browse for that. Castle new. And if you're playing multiplayer, you need to click cloud so other guests joining you can access that, that model. Secondary is used if you want to bring in other assets that have some animation to it. Point, we won't do that. I use generic type. You can experiment with some of the board and infinite and other settings. For material, um, like I said, that's more of what does the object sound like when things interact with it. It's like wood or cardboard, and then I import. So then the model comes in, interacts with the table. It's a little smaller, just so it's not knocking everything off the table. And then I can bump up the size. Can be a little cumbersome. And once you get your model positioned, you can either hit L, you can toggle it, and you can see how finicky it was when you're trying to place it. So this keeps it from moving or from a player accidentally bumping it. It also allows you to, when you lock it, to interact with all of the mesh colliders that are in the scene. So if I came up here and I use some of their standard RPG kit, bring a hero into the scene, place a knight. So he was able to find the surface here. If you don't lock it in place, most likely there will be a box collider that goes around the whole model. So this piece would be floating up over the buildings. Now you can see that it interacts, actually fall down the roof, put it up in the castle, walls, see all our textures came through, grasses came through, and then you can start to build your set and play your game. There are other assets that you can add to it. Um, some come with a table here, so if you want some natural elements, um, you can drag it over here. I like to do the search to see what's in that bag. Um, there's some rocks. Um, I don't see trees here, but you can download other tree packages and then you can populate the scene with all kinds of cool trees that then you can interact with and tear down, but it's just as simple as just dragging it into the scene and then you have your 3D models that are in there. I hope this has been helpful um, getting your content into Tabletop Simulator. Um, if there's any other comments or advice I'd like to hear from you on how to, to make this a better experience for you. Thank you so much.